Hi, I'm Kevin Hartley and welcome to Kevin Hartley Photography in my office. This is a channel that I've set up to share my experiences of wildlife and nature with others. So let's go. Understanding bird behaviour to me is one of the probably the most fundamental aspects to improving my own personal bird photography. Um, on my journey within my channel, Kevin Hartley Photography, I've made a number of videos on birds. and They wouldn't have been possible and I wouldn't have been able to capture some of the, 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 the images that I've got if I didn't A, know my subject and B, know about the behaviour. So understanding the behaviour of the bird is just as important um, when you're looking to get the images that you're after. So what I want to do in this video is I want to share with you how I go about uh, photographing birds, um, but more importantly, to give you what I consider to be my top five tips in understanding bird behaviour. To begin with, what I want you to do is I want you to look at this image and think to yourself, what happens next? So, what actually happened here was, I was actually in my car when I came across these two cock pheasants at the side of the road. So, I made sure it was parked safely, and I was just watching them when, all of a sudden, they both turned towards each other and they raised their tails. I then knew immediately what was going to happen next and the following photographs and what I was able to do was I immediately raised my, my, my shutter speed because I knew that a fight was about to take place and it did and it resulted in the, uh, the, the these couple of images that I've got here. Had I not known what was going to happen next, and I, and I didn't understand um, a little bit about um, pheasants and their behaviour, I wouldn't have been ready to get the, the, the action shots. Tip number five is all about wind direction. Um, wind direction plays a major factor in, in how birds go about their daily, daily routine. Most birds, not all birds, but most birds depend on the wind to gain lift on takeoff, especially your, your larger birds. Um, Birds that hover, birds like kestrels uh, or the barn owl, and you'll see in the, 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 this series of photographs that I've taken, barn owls, um, when they hunt, will hunt into the wind, and they have a technique which is called quartering, uh, which is basically a path or a routine that they follow systematically when they're searching an area, and, it's the, and, and they will fly into the wind because they will, at one stage, end up hovering, as do kestrels. Uh, kestrels and it's from a photography point of view, kestrels will always hunt into the wind. So if the wind's coming like this, the kestrel's here, its head will be absolutely static. It's incredible to watch while, whilst they're hovering and they're searching for food. It's a great technique. So, what you need to try and do with regards to the wind is position yourself with the wind preferably behind you from a photography point of view so that you can get the head-on shots of especially birds of prey. Okay, tip number four is all to do about the, the, the time of day. Um, what you've got to do is, the best thing that I, I can recommend is that you're going to photograph birds is the, 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 the creatures of habit so first thing in the morning, as soon as they come out of roost, they're looking to, to, to feed and drink. And last thing in the evening, before they're going to go to roost, again, they're going to be looking to, to eat and drink. And we'll look at that a little bit in, in a moment or two. This is the ideal habitat that you want for finding red grouse. It's not long after sunrise. It's in August. If I'm quiet, you might just hear the grouse. <laughs> so, what you need to do is you need to get there before the birds uh, appear. Um, that then allows you to get organised, get into position, ready for when the birds will arrive. So, what you need to think about is things like the light and, as we said before, the wind direction. But early morning, late evening are the best times. To, to, to go out and photograph birds.
Tip number three is eating and drinking. Apart from getting to really know and understand your subject, what you need to try and, and find out is what time birds are going to start feeding and, and drinking. And that's normally, as I said earlier, uh, as soon as they come out of roost in the, in, in the morning and before they go to roost at night. You need to know your subject, you need to know where they're likely to go to eat and drink and when they prefer to go and eat and drink. And some of the, 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 the images that you, you'll see here of birds drinking, it can offer you the opportunity to get some decent reflection shots as well. Thing is, birds can be more focused when they're actually eating and drinking and they're less aware actually of the surroundings because they need to eat and drink and that in itself understanding when they're going to eat where they're going to eat and how they do it the behaviour that they, 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 they have will allow you to get into a position where you can get the images you're after Okay, tip number two is all about alertness and uh, how birds uh, are aware of their surroundings. I did a previous video on how to approach wildlife and I'll leave a link to that at the end and in that I spoke about circle of fear which is basically how animals perceive danger and how they react to it and they will react in certain ways and I'll leave a link as I said at the end of this and that's well worth a, a good look at. But most birds have, a, have an alarm call or a sign that, that, that puts them and others into a state of awareness. And the blackbird is, is a classic example. Normally when you hear a blackbird, uh, it's alarm sound, everybody else hears it. It, it. One of two things, it's either it's seen you or it's seen a predator. One other sign of alertness in birds is when you see birds actually looking up into the sky. And that's normally um, when there are predators around, so birds of prey. So if you see uh, a, a bird that you're watching and it's looking directly up into the sky, it's probably seen a bird of prey. And that, again, can offer you an opportunity to, to get a picture of a bird of prey. Okay, tip number one is, to, is all to do with telltale signs. Certain birds will give off certain telltale signs that you know and you can forecast what the next move is going to be and you can be ready to, to either get into position, ready for them to, to, to approach you or to get the image that you're after. One great indicator is bird droppings or bird poo. Um, I did a video on dippers and I'll look, sh show you a little section here now um, and again I'll leave a link to that at the, the, the end of this video. Uh, just how important it was that I was able to recognise and understand a bit about the dipper's behaviour allowed me to get into the positions that I needed to be to get the images that we're after. Uh, one of the best indicators is to find markings on stones like the, this. Uh, and here we can see some droppings that have been made by birds and the very high likelihood is because I, I know this river um, and what it's like and I know that there's dippers here this is a place where a dipper has rested. So this would be a place that if you're looking to get a photograph, it's maybe set up at the, set up at the side and wait for the dippers to come to you. A couple of other things that the birds will do, um, or good telltale signs are, if you see a bird um, increasing or puffing its feathers out in, in, in its size and its stature, um, the likelihood is that that bird is switched on to, to danger or what it perceives as danger and the likelihood is it's either going to do one or two things it's either going to fly away or it's actually going to go and confront that danger.
The other good indicator or telltale sign that you might get a good uh, photograph from is when you see birds preening. Um, we see birds preening and, and, and washing. Um, they normally do that prior to actually going to rest. And you can sometimes get some good pictures as they are actually preening and washing themselves prior to actually going to rest. Okay, just to quickly summarise, being able to identify and understand bird behaviour what allows you to be able to forecast or give you a good indication of what the next move is going to be by that bird. That allows you to either get into position or whether you're already in position, ready for what the bird's going to do next and get the images that you're after. Birds are very much creatures of habit and with that understanding of a little bit about bird behaviour, I'm sure you will improve your, your keep rate. Uh, so, good luck. Thanks for watching this edition of Kevin Hartley Photography and Bird Behaviour. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, for me, I've learned so much uh, since I set up my, my, my YouTube channel, Kevin Hartley Photography, uh, and certainly in the area of bird behaviour. It really is uh, a, an area that, if you're serious about getting pictures of birds, it's alright knowing everything about the bird, but really you need to know about its behaviour as well also. So, until the next time, stay safe, take care, and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.